Demon Slayer Season 3 Episode 5. Starting off with Tokido's side quest, saving the swordsmith. Short work. Quick work. Alright, now this side quest is complete, we can get back to Tanjiro, help him out, because he really could use it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I I, I gotta go. Tanjiro kun ni tanomare te itan desu yo. Anata no katana no koto. So shite anata o wakatte yatte hoshii to. Ah, that's great. I love that character presenting, but uh, we should probably get get moving. But first, this touching moment. Oh, that's really thank you. Yeah, that's really sweet. But we gotta we gotta move. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, let's get this show on the road. Tanjiro's dying. That's so sweet that Tanjiro thought of me to tell you about my life. Hope he's still alive. <laughs> Episode 5, Bright Red Blade. Yeah, this, these swords might be a game changer. <laughs> Don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. Surely nothing could go wrong. This long, long run to this hut. There it is. <laughs> That's another urn. Speaking of RPGs, that's a thing. You gotta give it an elixir. Uh, still hate it. Now two upper rank demons that were all fighting solo. Oh, but Love Hashira's on, on their way. Hell yeah, I've been so looking forward to this. I feel like Love Hashira's gonna clean this up all by herself. Eventually. <laughs> it's, at some point. Here she is. Oh my god, hell yeah, that's so cool. What an entrance. It's all good. Oh, we lost her some NPCs. Damn, what the heck? <laughs> really looks like she's moving. Right? Oof. Yeah, she's already one of my favorites. I also, like, am really intrigued by her. I feel like there's a level of personal and emotional strength revealed by her kindness or her sweetness because a lot of the Hashira are off-putting and you kind of forgive them for it because of their livelihoods. They just have seen too much and they don't have the energy for niceties. The fact that she can do the same job and be a Hashira and still have this disposition, it's intriguing. Plus, she's just badass. I'm sure he's fine. It's another day in the Demon Core. Oh, I thought it was like a rope. It's interesting. But it moves, right? Yeah. Here we go. Love breathing. Whoa, what the heck? <laughs> Shivers of first love. It's as beautiful as it is painful. And she's got lines. Very on theme lines. I'm sold. He's fine. Walk it off. <laughs> All his wounds are healed. No one cares. <laughs> Nezuko just took him and fled. You gotta take out Lightning, dude. I feel like he's the, the pillar of their attacks. After last episode and many other examples, I solidly trust in Tanjiro's strategy abilities. Luring this guy alone is a good move. Are we already halfway through the episode? My god, these episodes are so insane, man. They just go so quickly once the action picks up. <laughs> what is he trying to communicate? <laughs> yeah, fish are coming from him. I wonder what else he can do. <laughs> these are always the most annoying enemies. The ones that create smaller enemies, or in this case... Wait, what? Everything about this dude is aesthetically irritating and terrible. Oh, 
Oh, it's like legit. I thought, whoa, whoa. I thought it was like an image of themselves, but he's been collecting villagers. <laughs> Just defeating them psychologically. He's got a real artistic soul. Thank you. So have I. Whoa. Yeah, it, it can't be that easy, right? Even if you cut off his head, I, I no longer have any confidence that that's the solution. How many does he have? If he's smart, he just has them all over. What's the trick? What's the secret? Maybe. What comes out of the back end? Oh, he's turning on them. Oh no. No, what the hell? There's no way. There's got to be an antidote or something. Such quick character development from him. Definitely proof of who he really is. And another example of why you can't judge the Hashira too quickly based on their external demeanors. And he did that automatically without thinking. There's got to be a way though. There's got to be some kind of antidote. I'm not ready to lose another Hashira. <laughs> We're on the same page, Tokido. Couldn't even cut through his neck. Oh, don't cut away. She's trying to tell him something. She's trying to do something. There it is. Oh, she, is she giving him the fire? It's cool support power. Damn, with the flaming. Yeah, there you go. What's the connection? Forever at a disadvantage. Damn, what a great speech. I'm thinking about the flashback in episode 1, where the swordsman was talking about how he'd failed in his mission, which maybe was fighting the demons, maybe fighting Muzan, and therefore wasn't worthy of passing down his name. But the person who looked like Tanjiro, probably Tanjiro's ancestor, obviously took great inspiration from that. Maybe that dude's name was Tanjiro. Not sure how Tanjiro would get his abilities, but there would be something very redemptive about that small action that that guy did, saving the baby, which might have been either Tanjiro or one of Tanjiro's ancestors, led to this moment and would fit in with the speech Tanjiro is giving about the cumulative effects of those who have given to you, which is something that I always love to see and deeply resonates with me. It's a tough space to live in all the time, but every now and then it hits me how profound this idea is, that there are so many things, you know, so many little tiny things that may have even seemed insignificant at the time, where people sacrificed or made the right choices, ignored easy answers, struggled to make things better, that had the cumulative effect of giving me a world that I can live in safely and comfortably and well. It's a beautiful thought. It's also a painful thought because of the intense responsibility that it brings. Because if you're standing on tens of thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, even millions of years of cumulative effort, don't you then have the same responsibility to be the strongest rung in that web that you can? There's like no more room for excuses or even misery, as weird as that sounds. It has a way of seeming self-indulgent if you look at it in that view. And one thing this show does so well, one of my favorite things about it is the fact that it's so obvious that the demons have every advantage, every physical advantage, but Tanjiro and his side will win. And that's real, right? Because while there's always tremendous misery and that will continue to the end of time and of human existence, in so many tangible and objective ways, things for humanity have improved. And I would argue that that's largely the result of just a handful of strong people who do their best, even if it's for selfish reasons or self-motivated reasons, who struggle and endeavor to build and create and grow despite, you know, just natural entropy and chaos of the world. I think it's no coincidence that their demons are not well united. I also think, as I've said, that one of the major Hashira weaknesses is that they're not united. But I think Tanjiro will be the one to do that. <laughs> But this is not just a cheap trick. It's not just a fire sword. It's got the power of thematic justice. That must be him, right? It must be him. And that was his failure. Tanjiro's carrying the torch. And the scar. The scar. It's growing on his head to match that guy. There's some kind of spiritual connection there, if not a genetic one. Oh god, that was so beautifully animated. Damn. 
Whoa. <laughs> Damn. Turn into a... Way more than just a sword. Please tell me they're dead. Please tell me Thunder just killed a demon by himself. Did he really just do that? That is huge. He's channeling something. <laughs> he is? Damn, good job, Genya. Wait, what? What did the demon do some kind of trans transference? Or is it just a cost of the power he used? Now we gotta fight Genya, it looks like. Still though, I'm like reeling from that victory. The fact that Tanjiro was able to do that. I like how it seems that Tanjiro's ability to do that is both something that exists in the lore of the world. It looks like it's turning to be some kind of inherited thing from the swordsman of the past, whether it's a genetic inheritance, which doesn't seem like it is, or some kind of spiritual connection, some kind of bond, some kind of promise, vow, whatever. And at the same time, it's a thematic thing. You know, it's carrying the legacy of the past, standing on the strength of those before you, even if their visions were incomplete. Just guessing at the way things went down. The swordsman we saw in the dream sequence of episode one took on Muzan and failed. Okay, but that's not the end of the story, because then it seems like his minor action of saving the baby led to some kind of covenant or bond or legacy that Tanjiro is reaping the benefits of. He's channeling that that's something. The legacy is there and it's real, even though it's unseen or untraceable in most cases. Time is such an amazing and powerful thing that it's kind of hard to account for conceptually, but I think has a way of adding more meaning to life if considered in full. Because if you take something that has been built over time towards a goal, the end point where it's accomplished is often the thing focused on as the most glorious. But in reality, it's a whole and there are a lot of indispensable parts. And the whole is nothing without each one of those components. So Tanjiro taking on demons, taking on Muzan for example, will have the effect of making every step and every person, even in their failures, glorious as well because of their struggle, because of their battle, because of their fight, and because of the things they did well, because of the times where they made good choices or did things for others or sacrificed for the greater good, even if those people will never know that. This is easily my favorite episode of the season so far because you have this great moment from Tanjiro, just amazing battle sequence, blowing me away with the fact that he actually managed to defeat or almost defeat this upper ranked demon. Plus you just get that whole sequence with the love Hashira, which was incredible. And basically what I was hoping for.